Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Gaska and welcome back to I Can Do That DIY for another doll repaint video. Today I'm going to be customizing Honey, the doll that I designed and created myself. This will be the second Honey that I'm customizing. If you haven't seen the first one, go check out that video. Alright, let's get into it. So of course I'm starting off with the Honey faceplate. Off screen I went ahead and did two coats of Mr. Super Clear as a base. Now using my Copper Beach watercolor pencil, I'm going to start sketching out the eye. Make sure to watch my other video where I prep and assemble the Honey Doll base body. Alright, that looks pretty good for one eye. I'll do the other side off screen. After that, I'll move on to using my small blue watercolor pencil and draw out the shape for the eyeshadow and then fill it in. Alright cool, now let's move on to adding some blush. I'm using my Red Iron Oxide Tint Pan Pastel. It's a new color for me and I wasn't sure how it would turn out but I'm pretty happy with the results. I'll be using it on the cheeks and the lips. On the next layer, I'm going to fill in the eyeshadow shape with some white blue acrylic paint. I'm sure you can tell but this footage just sped up. In real time, I'm moving very, very slow and precise. After I do one side, I'm going to do the other side off screen. Cool! Now that it's all dry, I'm going to move on to using my Dewart Ink Tense Ink Black watercolor pencil and mark out and fill in my eyeliner shape. After that, I'll use my white watercolor pencil and color in the waterline. Alright, cool. Now I'm going to use my pink watercolor pencil. I'm not quite sure what the color is. I can make out it says P Adder Lake 17. So yeah, let's use the P Adder Lake 17 watercolor pencil and work on the lips. I'll draw it on to the outer edge of the lip and then blend it out with my micro makeup applicators. I'll do the same thing with my white watercolor pencil but at the center. Now let's paint in the eyeliner shape with some watered down black acrylic paint. Watering down your acrylic paint helps it go on smoother. It's a fine line though, you don't want it too watery. Cool. After that, I'll do the same thing with white acrylic paint in the white areas. Awesome! Now let's give her some eyebrows. Using my Neutral Gray Extra Dark Pan Pastel, I'm going to work on the eyebrows. I'll start them out by marking out some reference points. The first two will be the starting points of the eyebrow. The next point will be at the arch of the eyebrow. I'm just going to connect the two. After that, I'll just swoop it out. After I mark on both sides, I'm going to clean it up with my eraser. On the next layer, we'll give her some eyebrow hairs. I'll start at the outer edge with a somewhat horizontal stroke and swoop inwards. As I work my way in, the strokes will get more vertical. Now 
Next, I'll use my Phthalo Blue Tint Pan Pastel and continue to work on the eyeshadow. I'm just going to smoke out the outer edge. Now let's add some pink pearlized mica powder to the blush. After that, I'll highlight the cut crease with a white watercolor pencil. Off screen, I decided to work on her eyebrows a little bit and I tinted the outer edge with my black pastel. Now let's give her some eyelashes. Going back to my Dewar Ink Tense watercolor pencil, I'm just going to mark those in. After I do both sides, I'm going to tint both tear ducts with my red iron oxide pan pastel. Now let's go back to the cut crease and paint over our watercolor pencil with some white acrylic paint. Cool. Now let's use this mid-tone pink pastel on the tear duct and the outer edge of the eye. Again, I'm not quite sure what the color is, but it is a Rembrandt pastel. After that, I'm going to give her some beauty marks with my black watercolor pencil and be really indecisive of the placement. On the next layer, we'll give her some eyelashes. I'm using some KISS brand faux eyelashes. Today I'm using the style Flirty. For my smaller dolls I use Shy because they're not as full. Like usual, I'm just going to measure them and cut them to length. After that I'll apply glue to the inner edge of the eye and the eyelash. Then I'll plop them on and fuss with them a little bit until I'm happy with the position. I'm going to do both sides and set it aside to dry. After that, I'm going to double stack the outer edge of the eyelash to give it a little bit more wing. I'll be using a different, smaller eyelash. Now that all the eyelashes are on, we can gloss the eyes and the lips. For the eyes, I'll just be glossing the waterline. Now I'm just going to set this aside to let the gloss dry and move on to doing the eyes. Off screen, I did a base coat of white rust oleum spray paint on the eye bases. The iris color is going to be light blue and I will be achieving that today with a mixture of acrylic paint, watercolor pencil, and pastel. And of course, I cannot be helped when I'm adding glitter to the eye. After that, I'll be adding a black rhinestone pupil. 
Then off screen, I'll fill and dumb it with some UV resin and add some white catch lights with some acrylic paint. And because I'm the awesome content creator that I am, I forgot to film a whole section. I did not film my wig making, which is just a little bob style that I made. If you would like a more in-depth tutorial on wig making, go check out my other video. But yeah, sorry about that. Now we'll continue on to the sewing portion of our program. Here are the pattern pieces for the dress we'll be making today. I'll be making a sheath dress with two fish eye darts in the front and two darts that finish at the neckline opening in the back. The fabric we'll be using today is a blue and white satin jacquard. It has a really beautiful large scale floral chinoiserie pattern. I'm going to start by sewing up the front fish eye darts and then move on to the back. After that, I'll sew up the side seams. And while I do that, I just say thank you so much for watching, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also make sure to hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest projects. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram. I now have three accounts that you can follow. At the Honey Doll for all Honey Doll related posts. At Kawaii Dollies for most of my doll work. And at I Could Do That DIY for updates about my videos. Both the neckline and hemline opening will be finished with facings. I cut them out of a silk lining and finish the edge with some fray check. After that, I pin them to the top and bottom edges. I'll sew them to the dress and then understitch the seam allowance toward the facing. Once I press the hemline and neckline opening, I'll add a velcro closure to the back. So here are all the pattern pieces for the jacket. Today I'll be making an off-shoulder swing jacket with a Lego mutton sleeve and a front hook and eye closure. Just like the dress, the jacket will also be finished with facings, but this time at the sleeve and neckline opening. For the sleeve opening, I'll stitch on the facing and understitch the seam. After that, I'll gather the cap of the sleeve and then set it into the armhole. Once both sleeves are attached, I'll sew the underarm seam and the side seam. Next step, we'll be finishing the neckline and hemline opening with one giant facing. Once I attach the facing off screen, I'll give it a press towards the inside and then give it a hook and eye closure at center front. But after looking at her in her jacket and her dress, I thought the outfit needed a little something extra, so I decided to make her a pillbox hat to go with the outfit. I'm using this random bottle cap that I found in my garage of an unknown origin, I think it's from a water bottle, and the same fabric that I used on the dress and the jacket. Using some poster putty, I'm going to stick the water bottle cap to the top of a spool of thread. Then I'll stretch the piece of fabric over top of that and secure it with a rubber band. 
Then I'll redistribute the excess more evenly. After that, I'll use my iron and a lot of steam to form it to the shape of the cap. Next, I'll cut off the rubber band and remove the fabric. Then we'll add some super glue to the top of the cap, and then carefully stretch the fabric over top of it. After that dries, I'll cut off the excess. Then we'll add some glue to the side of the cap and then stretch the fabric over top of that. Cool! Now let's add some glue to the inside and then fold the excess toward that. Once the glue's all dry, I'll cut off the remaining excess and then finish it with some fray check. Once the fray check is all dry, I'll use a piece of wire to add a hairpin to the underside of the hat so that it can be easily secured to the wig. After I bend the wire and cut it to length, I'll super glue it to the inside of the cap. And once the glue's all dry, the hat's complete. Now let's move on to the shoes. Using the same base heels that I created for Honey, I'll be spray painting them a French blue with some rust spray paint followed by a shiny UV top coat. They look pretty good so far, but let's add an ankle strap. Using these buckles that I 3D printed, painted, and glossed, and this ribbon. Let's start by making the tunnel at the back of the heel with some ribbon. I'm going to add some glue to the end of the ribbon and fold it over upon itself. After that dries, I'll cut it to length. Then we'll add some glue to the end and glue to the inside of the heel. Next up is the ankle strap. Let's put another piece of ribbon through the buckle and then glue the end. Once that's all dry, we'll feed it through the back tunnel and secure the buckle. Then we'll measure the length, cut the end, and then burn it. I'll do the other shoe off screen, and now it's time to move on to the hands. Also off screen, I created a ring using a bead and a piece of wire. To finish off her hands, we'll be giving her a manicure. And because I'm like that and the blues have to match, I'll be using the same spray paint that I used on the shoes. I'm just going to spray it into the paint tray and collect the paint. Next, using a fine brush, I'll very carefully paint each one of the nails. I forgot to mention that while I was doing this, I was wearing a respirator mask. Once both hands are completely dry, I'll finish up the nails with some glossy UV top coat. Now I just need to assemble her, and the doll's complete! So here she is, here's the finished result. For my second honey, I couldn't be happier with how she turned out. I really love the clean lines and the shapes that her design creates. All of her little details are very special. I wanted to finish everything with a clean edge without any visible top stitching. I really like how that turned out. Her aesthetic definitely has a classic touch to it with a modern twist. 
It's giving me very 50s slash early 60s, kind of Jackie O vibes too. Jackie O as in Jacqueline Onassis, not Jackie O the doll customizer. Although I do really love her work. In the future, I plan on making more versions of Honey, as well as different faceplates for her. Eventually, I do plan on selling her, so make sure to keep an eye out for all future news about Honey. I hope you guys enjoy the video and love Honey as much as I do. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like I mentioned previously, I'll be doing more versions of Honey in the future, as well as other dolls and monster mashups, so keep an eye out for all of my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching, and for the rest of the video, just enjoy the amazing photos. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!